Here we go. Hello, YouTube land, and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Dantes, and joining me, Caliones. And tonight, we'll talk about Michael Pachter. We'll talk about Uncharted. And of course, we'll talk about the latest gaming news, baby. So welcome, welcome to Forcing Unison Live. Caliones, you feeling pumped? Do you feel it tonight, baby? Uh, I'm not. I'm just uh, taking it easy. Uh, all my teams won this weekend. Uh, Ohio State you know, just started the other season with a win. Uh, the Indians just uh, secured another win over Detroit uh, tonight. And the Cleveland Browns closed the preseason at 4-0 uh, with, with a 25 nothing win. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I I'm would, if I was you, I wouldn't be celebrating yet with the Cleveland Browns. But we'll see. Could they be the, this year's Oakland Raiders? Could possibly be. <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about sports. We're here to talk about games, baby. So what is Forcing Unison Live? It's where me and Calione discuss the latest gaming news live for your entertainment. Of course, remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy motherfuckers happy. Please remember that we have a small Nintendo podcast called the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you don't want to see our ugly faces, you can download that podcast for free on SoundCloud and iTunes. Also remember, we do have a small Facebook page called Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Dantes says finally, go to chiguerosnews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, Caliones, let's start the show, baby. So what is the first new? Well, um, you already said it, and it's it's a tough one. So Michael Pasher with some really harsh words towards Microsoft, and I quote, Xbox One X is ranked on Amazon in the pre-orders a year to date. Last I looked, number 66. I believe the NES Classic was at number 23. It sold 2.3 million units lifetime, and you know that the bulk of those units were sold last year, so this year may be a million. So if Xbox One S is ranked 48 below that, it's not even close to a million. And of course, the Amazon allocation is probably five or 10,000 units, so don't fall for the bull that comes out of Windows Central that tells you that this is the fastest pre-order console in, X in Xbox history. They only have a couple. The original Xbox didn't have a big pre-orders. The Xbox 360 maybe, but honestly, who was pre-ordering consoles back then? So of course, this is the most pre-ordered. Ouch, Dantes. That was pretty hard from Pastor. Uh, was he right to you know talk like that? Um, so what, what do you think of those comments? So I think when we discuss on the first episode of Forcing Unison Live, we said it's good the Xbox uh, has great pre-order numbers based on the reports, but we also stated that Microsoft liked to spin the numbers and the news, and they were saying, if they, they were careful with their words. They were saying, well, this is the fastest selling Xbox pre-order we ever seen aside than a pre-order is not a sale until the game this console is sold but uh so to me they were smart in that and it probably is the the fastest selling pre-order for xbox it is the problem is like pactor says if you compare to the original xbox everybody knows that didn't sell if you compare with the 360 it started slow but then then it picked up steam so i don't think people were you know, pre-ordered consoles like we do today, right? And then the Xbox One, we all know how that 180 happened for them, trying to, you know, trying to get get the crowd back, baby. So, I still, I, I do believe Microsoft, when they say, like I said, they're master spinners, that this is the fastest selling pre-order Xbox. Now, what are the numbers? I gave props in that same episode to Nintendo because no matter how the Wii U was doing, Nintendo would tell you how bad they were doing. So it's okay. We'll see what happens. I still believe the Xbox One X will sell. I mean, it's it's a launch console. You have to sell the first week. You have to. There's no way around it. You better sell the first week. Now the question, the same question I had for the Switch, and the Switch is doing good because the Wii U, if you put it in comparison, the Wii U had strong pre-ordered sales. And then it, it slowed down. So the same 
for the Switch, the Switch is staying strong, which is good. So I have the same question for the Xbox One X. Will the pre-order sustain the momentum? So, yeah, it's um, it's gonna be all, always about the legs. Um, with the mark, uh, with the Xbox One X, yes, uh, they went in pre-order. Yes, the pre-orders went, uh, did so sell out. Uh, they brought them out again. They it sold out again. Um, I mean, it doesn't really tell you how many units uh, they actually sold, or at least you know pre-order because they don't have uh, concrete numbers on it. But if you look online, the console is sold out. So whatever amount it was that they had. Uh, they went ahead and you know and and sold all of those or you know uh, people separated them because um yep. uh, you always have people that they you know you want to keep them you want to try to flip them uh, but whatever uh, it's uh, it's still uh, sold out online um, I do feel that of course you know like you said yes they're stretching the truth uh, they're they could be making it seem well I mean not exactly making it seem because they can say yes it's their most pre-order Xbox console in history. And that could be true, but it's because you don't really have the numbers for the other consoles to know exactly uh, how much it is. But the way that they were painting it for people that don't really go, you know, delve too much into the numbers, it's gonna make it seem like, oh, okay, so they've done like anywhere from two to three million. Like, uh, so, you know, some people were you know, based on the uh, the Amazon rankings and things like that. They were trying to uh, find out exactly um, how many words uh, pre I mean pre-ordered. But it's always going to be like that. You always want to spin it into a positive, and with a positive recession from a console, then you have more people that were um, on the, like, I mean, just waiting to see how it performs. That they're also going to be jumping into it because uh, nowadays uh, people, what they care about, or mostly is the online. How many people are going to be online? They, if you get a game or something, that the, the people is going to be there. You're not going to be like waiting on queue forever just to try to see if somebody else connects. So. Um, I think it's do, it's gonna do good. Um, it it probably would do better if it instead of you know Xbox One X they would have had and just said you know what this is the uh, the Xbox Two and and we're starting with a new generation instead of just another mid generation refresh, uh, which is technically a second one because Xbox One S it's um, it's a step up from the original Xbox and then you have the Xbox One X uh, going over again. So that's two refreshes on the same generation. Mm -hmm. They might have, yeah, they should have started with a new one. I think if they went ahead with a new generation, it, they, it probably would be selling better instead of another refresh. Regardless, uh, once it comes out, it will be the most powerful console in the market. Yes. And that's when and that's when you're really gonna see comparisons of people uh, showing the game on the PS4 Pro versus the Xbox One X. And that's gonna be the biggest selling point um, when you finally see the the worth of the console, um, if it I mean if it actually is worth or not. But yeah, but when it comes to the pre-orders, uh, every company is going to spin into a positive. I work for a company that every time they send an email, we say that you know that's the the, the propaganda because they spin everything, uh, and we know internally that it may it they're stretching the truth. But I mean that's how companies are. They're always going to be. Uh, they have stocks to worry about. They have you know, like they, you know, things to worry about like that. So they're, they're always going to spin and, it. So. And, and everybody does it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Sony would merge the Vita numbers with the PlayStation 3 numbers, not to show the Vita numbers because mm -hmm. the Vita numbers were doing so bad for investors, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's tough, right? Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, I have to say that... Uh, that all, like you said, all cost, all companies do that to show the investors that they're strong. Xbox hasn't given numbers this generation because they don't want to show them. They're just saying how many Xbox Live users are there, how many you know X, Y, and Z, which is fine. You have to do what you have to do, but you know we just want to hear hard numbers. We like to study this, how the industry is going, how the health of the industry is going. Just say it. Don't be ashamed of it. It doesn't mean that the Xbox is doing bad. I mean the Xbox guesstimates, right? There are around 30 million new consoles sold. Is that bad? That's more than the GameCube. And and no one calls the GameCube a failed console, honestly, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know why the Xbox feels so oh I, I, I know they feel a little bit butthurt because they were really hardcore that they were gonna beat Sony this generation. And and that's not happening, right? So it's back to the drawing board, which is fine. That's you know what, in a sense, I don't want to sound like a Nintendo fanboy here. That's what I like about Nintendo. They don't give a flying fuck. They just care about them and how they're doing. And let's see how we can figure it ourselves out. Nintendo knows it's a competition, 
but they know they're not going to beat them in power. So they try different ways to try to compete with them, right? And then they, they, you know, they follow their own drum. And then Sony and Microsoft are always like, wham, bam, 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 you know, and they're fighting and trying to see one up each other instead of trying to innovate and trying to, to, to you know, to lead the way in a way. So that's where I struggle sometimes with Sony. I wish sometimes I would be like, I don't care. We, we don't care what Microsoft's doing. Let's just focus on ourselves. And the same for Microsoft, you know, instead of worrying so much about Sony, you know, the Xbox One X is basically a, a uh, the reason they made that console was they felt bad the whole generation. Everybody was saying PlayStation 4 is stronger than the Xbox One. And they didn't want to give the power advantage to Sony. And that's where the Xbox One X came. It is what it is, dude. So, But again, that's competition. I guess that's the competition. That's the beauty of it. They try. Hey, Microsoft last generation, they were anti-consumer. They were bad. I mean, you were paying for uh, Xbox Live for nothing. Basically, just to give permission to play online. And then Sony, yeah, they were giving you online for free. You know, they were the consumer friendly, you know, trying to sell, come back in the race. And, you know, they were giving you a, a free games for PS Plus. So you can, you know, you can, if you hire, uh, you know, apply for this subscription service, you get some games and then, and then all the apps were not behind the paywall where with Microsoft, you couldn't play Netflix and stuff like that unless you have Xbox Live. But, we have a 360 or a 180, I guess you could call it, in this generation. When Microsoft is like saying, "Here's backwards compatibility. Here's cr we want to do crossplay uh, uh, with all other consoles." Where last generation, there were the, the guys who were saying, "Nope, nope, no," nope. and then Sony won it, and Microsoft was no, 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 and then now Sony is the one saying no to cross crossplay, no to refunds and stuff like that. It just shows you the competition is good and. Both consoles going back and forth. I think it's a good thing because then if Sony next gen struggles, they'll be back trying to get you, you to win you over, right? And they could be better. The same with Nintendo. They're trying to win the gamer over with this new console. So it's it's good. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's something that I, I always admire from Nintendo is that they don't really you know care to go head to head against uh, the other consoles. They know that if they do so, they're not going to win. So they you know, create their own approach. But at the same time, it's i mean it's just fun i mean you gotta admit it's fun when you have the game you know the gamer you know flame wars and and all these you know console wars and things like that i know that um you you would like to live in a world where everybody you know lives in harmony and everything but it's it's exciting whenever you're you know pulling for one console one and the other one you know like to die and all that but i mean like especially how how you said it is that having console wars and having them go head to head brings the best out of them because i mean without them maybe xbox wouldn't be offering free games with their xbox live um i mean you got to think about that maybe yep, yeah that was agreed. the reason why you know, yep. sony started it yep. and now microsoft is doing it so yep. um they try to one-up each other then they start copying each other yep. and that's better for the consumer better for for all of us because we get a better value out of the price so i'm all for it i admire, admire what nintendo's doing but i also appreciate that we have microsoft and sony going head to head and, and looking it out so at the end of the day, uh, we as consumers, we win, and that's all that matters. Well said, Caliones. Well said. You get a golf clap for me. Go to the next one, baby. Okay. And, and you know, talking about Nintendo, uh, they started their, you know, actually, Nintendo games may require memory cards to experience all the content. Basically, uh, some games, um, well, the, the way that they're uh, saying it, for example, like, uh, NBA 2K is going to really require uh, a micro SD card in the system so you can enjoy the full game. So, um, I mean, it could be something where you have, let's say, the, the 8 gig card, you have the 16 gigs, the 32 gigs. Uh, some companies may not opt to go with the 32 gigs. They may say, you know what, um, our game is uh, 22 gigs, for example. So let's go ahead and, and have the 16 gig card. And then the remaining eight gigs, uh, we're going to go ahead and save that directly to the SD card. So that's one way that they can try to save money and put the, uh, I guess, the um, the burden on us, which, I mean, may or may not be good, depending on how it turns out and how many games do uh, do it. But NBA 2K18 seems like it's going to be the first game that you will require, will be required to have a micro SD card. So, I mean, it's... This is the first game. It's only happened once. What do you think? Um, should be should we be aware of it and afraid of it, or or what? So uh, this is what everybody at the start of this uh, of the Switch were worried about, right? They wanted more capacity on the Switch because of this exact reason, right? But mm -hmm. then you have to look at it two ways. 
if Nintendo put that much capacity, let's just say they would put 200 gigs, something to 250 gigs. I have a 200 gig SD card on my on my Switch, but let's just say they put it. Oh. What would that do to the design of the system? I don't know. I'm not a, a designer. I am an engineer, but I'm not yes. a designer for consoles. Uh, so I don't know what that would, why the reason why, or the Nintendo just do it because they wanted to keep the cost down. That's another reason, right? So they decided to let the consumer buy the car themselves like I did, right? Now, other consumers can do it. I can, but some can't. So that's kind of, it's, it's a fine line. I don't, I don't want to destroy Nintendo in this decision because it's, 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 I'm almost in the middle of it. I can't say like, oh, damn it, Nintendo, you should have put more memory on that system. Because I don't know why they decided to do what they decided to do because of cost, because of design, because of all this. I don't know, right? But I agree that it still sucks. It still sucks for the consumer. Maybe maybe they should have made it in a way that the dock had the, the hard drive on it. So when you dock the system, you can move stuff from game from, from the from to the switch. So when you take it portable, then you could put the drive the, the, the information of the game there to take it with you. But then that could possibly take out, take away the easy, how easy it is to dock and undock the system, right? I don't know. Again, I, I don't know. But this just reminds me, Kalionis, I don't know if you remember, the good old days when you had to buy uh, memory cards, right? Uh, <laughs> so this is kind of what is turning the Switch into. Uh, admittedly, SD cards are cheap. At least they went to a, 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 a format that is cheap to find. So, again, it, it's, it's, I'm 50-50. I don't know, Kalionis, how you feel about this. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is another one. I'm, I actually do not feel bad at all uh, for consumers that they may not be aware about, you know, game, um, gaming and memory cards and ex expand the memory. Just look at the, um, the, you know, for example, the iPhone. Uh, iPhone, um, it can retail you for, you know, let's say 199 with uh, 32 gigs. But then if you want the 64 gig, you got to pay an additional $100 on top of it. Just so, just so you can go with the, uh, the one that has the most memory or... Uh, $200, so you can go with the one that has 128 gigs, for example. So um, it's it's a what I really appreciate about this, and I'm fine with it, and I'm okay. Like you said, micro SD cards, they're cheap. Mm -hmm. I got a, I have the 200 uh, gigabyte card as well, and I only paid like $40 for it. So I'm glad that Nintendo gave us the opportunity for us to find our cards and 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 buy the memory instead of them forcing us to pay for that, um, you know, for the additional memory. So for example, um, they could have very, very easily said, you know what, uh, we're gonna have the Nintendo Switch, 32 gigs for 299, then we're gonna have the 64 gig for 399, and then we're gonna have the 128 gig for 499. So I mean, they, that's uh, probably exaggerating, but that's that would have been uh, the prices for those, or that's how you would have been forced to get additional memory if they would have done it like that by making it micro sd card instead of internal and putting all the memory in, on the inside you have the opportunity to get the cards whenever so i'm pretty sure people buying the switch they may have a card laying around so they can already put that uh, a year or two years from now the you know 200 gigabytes cards instead of 40 dollars like like i paid for it it's probably going to be 20 bucks so so it's going to go down in price so um the more the time passes the more that those cars are going to be cheaper, and we we don't really have to worry about. So I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. I know I do understand that certain consumers they would like to have everything in the box and not have to worry about uh, having to get additional things to make up for it. But I'm completely okay with it. Um, but what I do worry about is, uh, for example, not not saying that you know like 2K is doing it, but let's say that. Normally, uh, companies would invest X amount of money on the, on the cards, but now they say, okay, you know what? We can make all of this additional money or save all of this if we go ahead and, and buy the smaller cards, uh, pay a couple of dimes for it, and put the, uh, the remaining amount, uh, the burden, on the consumer. So that's when, where I'm going to have a problem. If they're going to be doing it on purpose, you know, like purposely to make us be the ones that have to pay for it. So that's... Uh, what I do have to worry about, uh, or what I do worry about when it comes to the company. So, um, I mean, we got to be careful with it. Uh, hopefully, Nintendo is going to give us uh, certain alternatives. Um, hopefully, the format is going to is going to be cheaper a, a year from now because 
uh, like every any you know technology, uh, by the passing of time, it becomes cheaper and cheaper. So maybe that's something that Nintendo isn't really worried about because they know next year um, cartridges, you know, prices are going to be cut in half or um, you know three quarters or, or whatever. So um, we just got to be careful from the the company side trying to take advantage from the consumer. But as far as like having you know the internal memory size and things like that, um, I'm okay because I know that. And the reason why Nintendo did it is, is to give us the best price point for the system without having to inflate the pricing because they wanted to include the X, Y, and Z. So I'm I'm okay with it. That's fine, Caliones. I guess we'll let our two viewers out there let us know in the comment section how you feel about that news. But Caliones, go ahead to the next one. Okay. Well, um, so we have from you know from PAX uh, this year. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition is such an exact remake is surreal. Uh, so basically, they're saying that yes, uh, don't be fooled by the shibby um, artwork from the characters. This is the full game. It is a complete remake of the original game, for better or worse. But it is the full game. So hopefully, um, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, the content exactly is from uh, that version. But I mean, hopefully, it'll include. The additional DLC that is going to be brought for Final Fantasy 15 as well, so you have the complete storyline, and you don't have to kind of like you know make up in your mind what could have been. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess um, like I said, the art style is so different that it's, it's it, for me it looks good. It looks like a bravely default uh, skin on those. So hopefully, if Final Fantasy 15, the game doesn't make it to the Switch. Hopefully the uh, the pocket edition will. So we'll see. What what do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll play it because I already played enough of that game. I'm I may play that game just to finish the you know the side stories. But I I am really I'm really not liking Final Fantasy 15 now. Like the more I think about it, that game has dropped off really. The first time I played, I was like, hey, it's not a bad Final Fantasy. It's it's better than Final Fantasy 13, and I still it's better than Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> But it's just had so many plot holes that they're trying to fill now. It was just an incomplete version of what they sent out there, right? And 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 I, how, why would a company do that, right? Again, to sell you the season pass, I guess. When we talk about it last or in the get in get out last episode, where the season pass is fine, if you at least finish your complete story, right? And Final Fantasy 15 doesn't feel that that way, so. And Square really trying to push Final Fantasy 15, not only in the Pocket Edition, they got a mobile game that they're promoting up the ass. I mean, every time I open a YouTube page, the Final Fantasy promotion comes up, uh, and and you know, and they're trying to make it like a huge, like a like 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 the MCU basically, <laughs> its own universe, right? And they're making it that way with a game that I just, if it was Final Fantasy 7, okay, maybe. But then you get scared because you don't want them to damage any more Final Fantasy VII like they done or six or nine or whatever, right? So I think the good part about this, Caliones, is that finally you'll be able to play it, right? Because if it comes to the Switch in Pocket Edition, I guarantee it will come to the Switch. So uh, I do believe that. So, Caliones, you'll get a chance to at least play the story and then at least then once you beat it. We always have that discussion on Final Fantasy once we beat the games. Uh, so uh, when you beat it, we'll have a discussion of it. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway. Yeah, and I mean, and uh, you know, Final Fantasy, uh, you know, 15 is, is currently, um, I guess, aside from like the fourth or, or in fifth ones, uh, the only one that I haven't beaten. Um, so, I mean, that's that's one that I really do need to put time on it. And of course, you know, being portable, um, I can you know take it anywhere and and be able to go through. Uh, through the game because um, I don't really have the luxury that I used to have when I was younger and to be able to spend X amount of time um, and you know dedicate myself to you know get everything on them um, also I, I think of uh, probably the only the other reason why I haven't really been able to play it is because I always try to get everything uh, on the game uh, I was doing the same with Final Fantasy 14 even though it was online trying to get all the uh, all the trophies in it uh, same with 13 I went ahead and got all the, uh, uh, I got the platinum on that one. Uh, but when it, um, Final Fantasy 15, I was playing it on the Xbox One, and they have like the gamer score, and it's I don't know, like the gamer score, it doesn't, it's not as appealing as uh, the the trophies because the trophies, you really do get that achievement of 
yes, uh, I got all these things. Yes, I beat it. Yes, this is how uh, you know my trophies will show it. But w with the game of scores, that's my that's why I'm a trophy yeah. whore. I keep saying it. Trophy, yeah. the trophy system is way better. Give me mm -hmm. something. I, 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 like if Nintendo does the trophy system, make it like medals or something that feels like physical that you you know you earn it instead of just points. Points. Oh, yeah. Okay. Woo, whatever. Anyway, keep going. Sorry, Kalia. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was saying that perhaps if I had the uh, the PS4 and I was playing Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15 on the PS4, then yes, I would have more incentive or beating the game because I have the clear uh, images and the clear, um, I guess you know, the you know, the trophies just to tell me this is what you've achieved, this is what you have missing, and hurrah, you know, you got everything. So uh, that's. Uh, I'm probably just gonna have to, you know, replay it again on the Switch. I'll be able to do it because I, I just love the format of, you know, being play, able to play on the TV and then, you know, take it on the go. If not, I'll probably just play on the PS4. I, I don't see myself uh, beating it on the Xbox One. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully it does come. Yes, hopefully it comes to the Switch. It'll come to the Switch, Kali. I know you'll be all over that shit if it comes to the Switch. Again, being portable, it's also easier to play long games like this. So we'll see what happens. On to the next, Caliones. Okay, so uh, this one is uh, in a statement to you know, Glitzel, the company. Uh, this is Microsoft said, as is typical for the uh, console industry, we stopped manufacturing the original Xbox when we introduced the Xbox One X. Um, after that, you know, because they weren't clear, uh, people were going back and trying to see uh, if they you know, really did discontinue it. They did confirm that, yes, uh, the original Xbox has been discontinued, but... Um, I mean, should people make a big deal out of this? Um, I don't think so, because if Xbox One S, uh, that should be the base model. Xbox One X, the other premier one, and they should be, uh, keep it like that. You have A and B. Uh, you don't need to have a third one um, in there. So I'm, I'm fine with it. What, do you, what about you? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I mean, who the hell wants that big-ass cable box when you have the S, who is slimmer, better design, looks better, and it has a 4K Blu-ray in it. So I'm like... What in the hell? I mean, who cares? This one is easy. This one we can close quickly in the discussion because I think we both agree that Microsoft would be wasting their time if they were still trying to manufacture this uh, old, ugly-ass ca cable box, honestly. And I think that also hurt Microsoft at the start of the gen because it, it is an ugly system. You can't deny that. <laughs> I almost didn't think about it. They were so worried about the red ring of death and, and, this, and the Xbox overheating that they just said, let's give him as a wide open space as possible, right? So, uh, you know, I always say it. Sony is way better in manufacturing the hardware. Xbox has always been better in manufacturing the software, right? And what I mean software, don't, don't say games. I'm saying more the OS and stuff like that. So, um, and, and in this case, it, it, it showed. But I think Xbox have learned in the following designs like the S, and the X, I mean, the X for that much uh, uh, power inside the system is a nice compact system. So, hey, credit what credit is due. But that OG Xbox One is ugly as fuck and sayonara. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to think about the consumers. Consumers now, they're worried about what they're, what they're going to be putting in the living room. So in the living room, the biggest thing that you want to have on it, of course, is going to be the TV. You don't want it to be the Xbox. So you don't want the box, you know, to stand out in front of everything yep. else. So yeah, you gotta make it uh, consumer friendly. You gotta make it smaller, compact, and easily, I mean, hidden if you know the, the people want to do that. So, but with the original Xbox, that was near near impossible. Um, that's why, I mean, that's why even yeah, you know, they stopped making stands for the system because people don't really want to you know, stand them up and they just want to like put them in a side corner, hide it, and just have the TV be the uh, in the forefront of everything. Uh, the only exception to that, of course, is the uh, the switch because you have the dock, and that's why they made the you know the dock uh, where you can easily like hide the cables on the back, so so it looks nice on the front. But with the original Xbox, it was so big that it would just it was a nice door uh, to the living room. So uh, the new one uh, looks great. Uh, like you said, for a system so powerful, uh, it is you know really small. Uh, so I'm I'm glad that you know the engineers went the extra mile on that one. And it, it shows. So, but yeah, um, that we uh, shouldn't really be making a big deal about it. Uh, uh, Arriba Dashi Xbox One. Um, you had a not so great run, but <laughs> Microsoft is, is ready to move on uh, with the Xbox One X. Yeah, they're ready. They're coming full force this November. So, question, Calionis, out of the uh, side note, right? Who do you think is going to win NPD in November? 
November? Yep. Ah. <sighs> Uh, okay, I'm going to say I have absolutely no idea, and it's not because I'm torn in between one or the other. I'm actually, any one of the three could win it because you have Sony where they could go uh, with the slim version and just do a fire sale on it and offer it with a couple of free games, and slash it in, in, you know, for 50 or $100. So, I mean, of course, you have you know Black Friday uh, before the month end, so that's going to be a, a very important uh, you know, week for for those consoles then you have the nintendo switch where nintendo is not really going to you know like lower the price of the console they may or may not offer you know free games with it but um they may have a lot more consoles available so the all the people that have been you know looking for it and try to purchase it they're going to be able to buy it and then you have the xbox one x where whenever you have a console launch the console sells regardless even the wii u sold uh, when it came out so it's it's really hard. Um, any any one of the three could you know really win it. Um, if you were to ask me, um, I would say the Xbox One X has to win it because it's a console launch, um, and you would think that that would be the deciding factor over everything else. You know, people have been able to get the Slim for I'll say yeah, by no, by next this November for over a year, so they would have been able to like get it last year as well. Uh, the Switch. Uh, it doesn't matter how many consoles they have available. It still shouldn't really be able to compete with a console launch. So it has to be the Xbox One X. Uh, but we'll see. What, what about you? Uh, I think you said it well. I think the Xbox is going to win because two things. You said it one key thing, right? You said the PlayStation could, is going to do a fire sale. I agree. PlayStation is going to fire sell those fuckers. They're going to fire sell the Pro too. I'm betting the house on that. But, but. It's Xbox is the new console. You have to sell the 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 sales that you get again from the hardcore fans, right? They're buying your system again. And Microsoft is going to give you a fire sale for the S. They're going to. I think the S is going to compete with the Slim on how cheap it's going to be with one or two games in there included, like you said. So with the fire sale of the S... And the launch of the X, in my opinion, it should be enough for Xbox to win November. But anyway. Yeah, and, and that's going to be the other key aspect of it because Sony has been doing it. They've been, I mean, they, to some extent, especially last year, they were counting the console sales of the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Pro together, not separate, uh, because the PS4 Pro wasn't selling as good at the beginning. It's, it's, it get, gained some momentum afterwards. So I think um, Microsoft is probably going to do the same thing. Um, they put the Xbox One S and X sales both together as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it ends up. But it, but the Xbox One X by itself, it should still be able to be the best selling console just because it is a console launch. So all the pre-orders are going to be counted in November, plus everybody else going to the store and buying it as well. Um, only thing that's going to keep it from it is the price point because it's $500. And I know that um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to side with Microsoft on this because you are really getting a, a great package when it comes to you know, the power of it. What is really keeping it from being great is the games because uh, it doesn't really have that many games. But then again, the next, new, the next piece of news that we're going to talk about is about PlayerUnknown's Battleground. And that game could really push the Xbox One X over the top if it launches with it uh, in November 7th. Yeah, that game, that's why I put the news in there. So the news, mm -hmm. can you go into the news, Caliones, and then we'll touch on that game? Okay, and this is the reason why. Okay, so Player Unknown's Battleground has been out for barely five months on early access, and it just beat out one of Steam's most popular franchises after pre previously becoming the most played non valve game on Steam, coming in second place to Dota 2. So... Basically, Dota 2 is the most played game on Steam, and for a brief while, Player Unknown's Battleground, which is a game that is on early access, is not out yet, beat it with the amount of uh, games they had concurrently at one time. Um, it's actually averaging, I believe, um, like close to like every day, like an average of almost a million players playing every day. Uh, so it's, I mean, this the game. I think it's a monster. Um, I don't. There's no stopping it. And like, like we you know, touching upon the previous one, which is the Xbox One X. 
if it launches on the same day on November 7, it's, it's going to be scary how much the Xbox One X is going to sell with this game as its launch title. So I think this is all, all they, they will need if it comes out. So. so that's why I put that news right. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be Microsoft uh, trump card in a sense, right? Because Microsoft doesn't have the exclusive. They don't. They, they can't compete with Sony. And, and Nintendo on exclusive department. We all know this. It's, it's impossible for them. They haven't built the studios like Nintendo and Sony has done. Pure and simple. But they have acquired this. And it's a launch exclusive. This game will come out to, in PlayStation in a year or so. Six months, whatever. It's a launch exclusive, which is fine. But if you keep it six months and this game becomes a monster. Like people are predicting it's going to be. This could help the Xbox One X sell consoles or the S. The S, because it's not exclusive to the X. It's, it's, it's also going to be playing on the S. So that could give Microsoft at least a couple of months until this game finally comes to PlayStation, where they can maybe gain some momentum. They're not going to win this generation. It's over. But they just want to keep fighting, keep showing that they have a strong brand. And again, they don't have the exclusives. They need something to compete against. Nintendo's Odyssey, Xenoblades of the world that's coming, Pokemon Tournament, and Sony's Uncharted, Gran Turismo, uh, God of War that's coming for Sony, right? So it's again, it's it's they have to compete with something, and this was I'm surprised Sony did not get this exclusivity before Microsoft. Like I think Sony fell asleep on this one. So again. I think this could be a trump card. That's why I, I added this news and I wanted to talk about it because I think you could be surprised. We could be really surprised. Now, I've seen this game on YouTube and the, to me, the game looks boring, but I haven't played it, right? So, but that's not my type of game. But maybe I understand the the addiction of, of surviving and trying to get the better weapons and trying. If you die, you die. You don't respawn. So it's almost like a, it's almost like playing Survivor, the TV show. <laughs> Where if you get done, dude, you're cast out. It's over. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Not my type of game, but I understand the the appeal, maybe. But I mean, anyway, I don't know what Kalionis, how you feel. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, like I said, the um, it's it's one of those games that you have to experience. Um, yes, you have a hundred players in on this map. Um, you have to fight against ninety nine other people. You parachute in. Uh, you start, you know, like looking for uh, armor, Scavenging. weapons, yep. mm -hmm. you know, like uh, all of that. And then you have the map where little by little it starts, you know, compressing and, and becoming smaller and becoming smaller. So at first you're going to have this big map with 100 people. Uh, it's going to be everybody's going to be hiding, finding their spots and, you know, like sniping and, and, and all of that. But then when the map becomes smaller and smaller, that is when it becomes really hectic. So it's it's kind of like uh, like Call of Duty's uh, Nooktown. Uh, Nooktown is a really small map, and if it, it was, I mean, I mean, of course, yeah. If you die, you can respawn again, all that. But it's really hectic because you are in this small place, and you have all these players, like 16 people at the same time fighting. But with unknown player battleground, it's a hundred of them. So the concept is fun. Is is they weren't really the ones that created it. Um, you know, like Ark uh, has been out, and it's uh, something similar as well. But this game, it's got, I mean, it's, I have absolutely, I mean, I can't really explain it because it came out of nowhere and it's, um, you know, close to being the most played game in the world. So, so and the um, funny Microsoft, part is that yeah. you can see already Activision and Ubisoft just like, ooh, let's see if we can mimic this shit. We want to make the money. You know what I'm well, saying? I want to say Rockstar uh, already started doing something similar on uh, GTA Online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so I read that. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's not a hundred players, but uh, they're but that's that's another another monster when it comes to GTA Online. So um, yeah, they they they're taking advantage of it. They're gonna do it on theirs. If somebody can do it, great. It's Rockstar, but either way, you know, player unknowns uh, battleground is it's gonna be the system that sells the Xbox One X. So that's gonna be the reason why you need to own an Xbox One X. Yeah, and, and you know what? Thinking about it, how you explain it and I've, what videos that I've seen, also reminds me at first, The Last of Us multiplayer, I was like, yeah. But you know, one of the things of The Last of Us multiplayer that I liked a lot 
when I was uh, planning that game was the survivor aspect of it because at first you you didn't went head first and try to fa fight anyone you first scavenged for parts scavenged for items trying to see what best you could do and it was more strategic in a way of that multiplayer instead of just gun holes like uncharted and call of duty and stuff like that so uh i don't know maybe that's what the appeal maybe that's what i'm missing maybe if i play it i'll probably be hooked and the same for you uh, again it's not my type of game but that survival aspect maybe can pull people in but we'll we'll see but you're right we'll yeah. we, we'll have to wait and see this november baby and see if uh xbox wins npd anyway carry on, let's go to the next one okay and well so on the next piece of new uh piece of news let's see if if it puts a smile on your face so reportedly warner brothers has been using producer martin scorsese to lure longtime collaborator leonardo dicaprio to be the Joker on the Joker's origin movie. So Leonardo DiCaprio, the Joker, we already saw what happened to Jared Little on the Suicide Squad movie and the reception from it. So do you think Leonardo DiCaprio will accept the role? Do you think he will do it? Or do you feel like um, he thinks that he may not be able to top Heat Ledger's uh, Dark Knight's you know, Joker and not do it? So what, what, where are you on that one? How do you see Leonardo? Uh, so I put this one, I'm a huge Batman fan you can see uh and uh and it, it was more to discuss it like forcing unison life we can talk about whatever whatever we, we we like from the news this week right not only about gaming this one shows you that yeah. and the reason and I, no no religion and no politics though. yeah no religion and no politics big deal no uh but to clarify the reason i put it is i wanted to discuss do you feel like dicaprio could do a good joker so i'll let you start first if if, if he accepts the role of course okay uh well i'm gonna say I, I really do think that Academy Award winning Leonardo DiCaprio can pull it off. Uh, I mean, he's done so many char different characters that I think he can. But I mean, he's not really the, the you know the top one on my list that he could you know that could be the Joker. Um, I really feel like uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, even though he played Robin uh, on The Dark Knight, he has the uh, the acting skill. He has the face and the and the charisma to be the Joker. So that's one that I would probably put. Um, um, you know, first, but I, I feel like as far as you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, he would be good for the role. Um, I mean, he could. You know, we're already seeing crazy from him, especially you know, you know from you know, a couple of different roles that he's had. Uh, so he can, he could, you know, pull it off. But I'm not sure if he would be open to do it, just because there's so much pressure to get that character right. And we already know what happened to Jared Leto and uh, and other criticism that he received, justified criticism. But then again, we don't really know if it was Jared's uh, fault, if it was the other writers, because that movie, I mean, there's so many things that you can talk about that were wrong in it. Uh, but yeah, um, I think he, he could pull it off. He wouldn't really be my first choice. I love uh, DiCaprio and, and his movies and, and everything. And I'm, I'm glad that he finally got the Oscar that he deserved a long time ago. But as far as this character, it's, it's so hard that I'm not sure that he will accept it. So, what, what about you? So, I'll put it this way. I, I didn't like Leto's version of the Joker. Not my type. I didn't like the gangsta type of uh, of a clown. I don't know. Well, I didn't like it. Harley Quinn, I did like a lot. But uh, Leto's version, no. I no, I, I don't know. The, the, the laughing wasn't there for me. And also, uh, you have to understand, I'm a huge fan of Mark Hamill's joker right and he's the perfect voice actor for the joker so so it's hard for me that's always the starting point for me when i see a joker and then from there we can see where it heads and and jack nicholson joker wasn't bad wasn't bad at all he had that charm he had that uh laugh again the laugh is critical to me and the same with heat leisure right so leto's version don't like it now i believe um dicaprio can pull it off perfectly i i would like to see his version of the joker you know me, I hated DiCaprio. You know me, that Titanic movie playing sucks. I hated Titanic. When DiCaprio Mania hit, I was in high school. And, yeah. I, and I wasn't... I, was, I, I hated him. I hated I him. I wasn't getting any too. So it's tough. You know, you get jealous and shit like that. So, you know, it's it, it's it sucks. It just sucks, right? And uh, <laughs> and all the girls are like, ah, DiCaprio, oh my God, yeah, but then oh my God. Then, then you had the beach. Then you had, you know, Gangs of New York. Uh, Catch me if you can. And that's when he actually started winning me over as an actor. 
So you know what he won yeah. me over? I, he won me really, really, really after that. He won me in the Django Unleash. Like finally, I was like, okay, this guy's good. I have, I have to stop the hate. It's been twenty over twenty years now. You know, get over yourself. Uh, and uh, and when I saw the Django Unleash, that scene where he's uh he's uh you know discovers the the Django is there for his wife that he owns, right? And he cuts his 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 hands and just he kept the scene going. He kept he kept bleeding yeah. and he keeps doing the scene. I was like, you motherfucker, that's that's fucked yeah, that's, up. That's something that people don't really know about that scene is that he actually cut himself. Uh, and I mean, it wasn't supposed to happen in the movie, but he just kept, you know, he continued acting and played it off and made the scene even better. So yeah. no, yeah. that was, that was, that was bad. That was awesome. I mean, bad in a good way. Trust me. So after that, I, I, and you know, I'm watching more DiCaprio movies and understanding now, okay, this guy's good. I wouldn't mind seeing him as the Joker. I would say, bring it on. I want to see that Caprio do the joker i mean he'll be better than leto and then we can kick leto out and then he can become the dcu's uh a joker <laughs> i'm just saying hey, ben affleck is supposed to leave him ben affleck stays and goes stays and goes every every freaking day so uh maybe we can have another batman i don't know anyway well, well i mean uh, since we're taking a break from games and we're talking about movies uh let's go ahead and continue one step further when it comes to the the dc uh universe okay so you have the Gotham series uh, on TV. So yep. that's you already have a Batman there, right? Well, a then, young Batman, but yeah. Well, but yes, okay. But it's still Batman. Uh, or but be, before he... Yeah, it's Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne. Okay, so so you have that already. Then you have the Batman and Superman Batman, right? And the same one from the Suicide Squad. So that's in the same universe. And now you have the Joker origin story, which is going to be yet another different universe so now you have DC with three complete different movie universes. So I mean, uh, is is that bad for the people? The the ones that are trying to follow uh, what TV shows, what movies, you know, they should be watching. Uh, they're gonna be confused because then on the um, on the Batman movie, it's not gonna be Ben Affleck. It's gonna be another Batman, yep. uh, a different one as well. Yep. Uh, you now you have a different Joker, and the next movie is gonna be I think is. Uh, the next, uh, the sequel to Suicide Squad is going to be uh, Joker versus Harley Quinn or something like that, something crazy. So, uh, like, what what's going on with that movie universe? <laughs> uh, I mean, they just didn't build it properly. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, Marvel took their time to build up to the Avengers. Uh, hello, Glynis. Well, what? I'm oh, just uh, saying hi to, like, you know, somebody on the chat room. Oh, who's there? What up? Yo, uh, Glennis, nice to, nice to come. Thanks for coming to Forcing Units on Live, where we talk crazy shit. Right now, we're talking about Mar Marvel versus D uh, DC. Uh, I was saying, I mean, Marvel took their time to build the, their movie universe, and DC just went crazy and like, poof, and let's do it now. And Justice League is right now after just one movie, right? And it was like, it, it, it wasn't built properly. Like, even when Spider-Man came on to uh, Civil War, that was... That was built in a sense, even though it just came kind of last minute. Everybody was waiting for it. And, you know, Marvel built uh, the Iron Man movie first and they did the Hulk. You know, then they did uh, uh, Captain America. They they tore, they built that universe little by little. And now it's become so big, but it's well established. Like they look at every detail and it feels like DC doesn't do that. And to your point, it will confuse the audience because now you have people, you know, here and there who thinks, Okay, which which is the real story or which I guess I guess you have to see it like this, Calionis. If in the comic book world, that's normal. Like you have different books running at the same time and no more no one is questioning which one is real or which one I should follow. Everybody just picks one and then just goes for it. I could foresee happening the same thing in the DC universe anyway. Yeah, so I think it's the same thing in the uh, the video game world. Uh you have the the Batman Arkham games, you have the Telltale games. So, so you have different universes. Of course, yeah, it does help that uh, you have a distinct art style attached to those games. You know, so you know that they're completely different. But uh, in the movie world, it, people have been what they expect is the Marvel treatment, and the Marvel treatment is be, that all the movies and TV shows they're all tied together, and they're expecting DC to do the same thing. The bad thing about DC, and I guess you know, their their luck has been that 
uh, Green Lantern was supposed to be one of those movies, and now they had to you know scrap it up and not make it part of the universe because it underperformed um, greatly. So then you have um, the Suicide Squad, which is an extension of like you know the Superman movie, Batman versus Superman, and they don't really like how that one is heading, so they decided to like start another you know, movie universe separate as well. So now they have two concurrent universes, and I'm pretty sure that they're trying to see which one does better, so they'll decide to go with this one or the other one. But at the same time, you have the Wonder Woman movie, which is attached to the Batman and Superman and Suicide Squad universe. So you're kind of forced to go with that one because Wonder Woman was uh, such a great movie that, I mean, it for me, it's, uh, I kind of feel bad for it because that movie doesn't deserve to be attached to all those other movies. Uh, you know, Gal Gadot, she's the perfect Wonder Woman. Uh, movie was perfectly directed, you know, and I, I feel bad that it's forced to be attached to those. But I mean, it's with the good comes the bad, and hopefully they'll be able to write it up. I mean, write the ship up, and and they'll be able to do you know better when it comes to uh, to the movies themselves. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that affects and uh, the com- you know consumer standpoint about them either you know getting confused on why are they seeing a Batman that's different from the other Batman and you know etc. So we'll see the reception on that. We shall see, Caliones. Go ahead to the next one. Okay, well, uh, the next one and the last one uh, when it comes to the pieces of news. And, I mean, of course, you wanted to have this one on here. So Uncharted, The Lost Legacy is the sixth PlayStation exclusive game to top the UK charts this year. Um, that's you know, yet another game uh, this year that has performed great in the UK. UK, uh, you can pretty much call it the you know, PlayStation country. Uh, Nintendo doesn't really do good over there. Uh, Xbox doesn't really do good over there. Um, Nintendo has Japan. Uh, Xbox has the U.S. Uh, PlayStation has a little of you know of all those uh, you know of the U.S. and Japan, and of course you know like U.K. and you know Europe. Uh, so how what what do you what would you say about this? Because I'm I'm gonna let you talk because you're the one that's gonna take it the extra mile with your you know fanboyism. So go ahead. So no, I mean good. I mean, it just shows you. Some people say the exclusives don't matter. They do. I mean, it's the truth. They 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 give you a reason to buy the console. And I think Sony last year and this year they they've been killing it with the exclusives. And not only Sony. To clarify, the third party exclusives too, right? And when you become the best selling console, you will get third party exclusives, pure and simple, like Persona, like uh, uh, Neo. Even though Sonic did did publish that game. Uh, uh, you know, uh, near Automata console exclusive, right? Uh, uh, so, so the third party has been supporting this console, and then Sony drops their, their exclusives. They drop uh, Gravity Rush two this year. They drop you know uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. They dropped uh, Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, uh, and and they're dropping Gran Turismo, which that game in Europe is huge. That thing is gonna sell like gun gun busters over there. So again. You know, exclusives do matter. They give you a reason for it. And what Sony has done this generation that's been smart is that in the in the in the fall, right, where where everybody's heading for the Christmas time, and third parties drop their games, Sony just go and set up uh, uh you know deals with Destiny and Call of Duty and you know and 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 the Battlefront, right, and stuff uh, like that, FIFA. And, and FIFA and stuff like that, you know. And they, they do those deals and they do those bundles and they say, we'll let third parties sell our console because we know that the, third, the start of the year, which is why I'm so hard on Nintendo, that Xenoblade supposedly is coming down December 29. Nintendo, please don't. Uh, that, you know, games sell in March and in February, March and April are perfect months because everybody's done with those games in the fall. Everybody's done with Christmas games. Everybody's beating them. They're hungry for more games. You know what? Hellblade? Why, who in the hell would thought Hellblade would sell? And you know why that game sell? Because there was a dry spell right now. No one, there was no the hot game. And everybody was talking about Hellblade for what, two weeks? Hey, that's what Ninja Theory needed. Where you place the game, where you put the game to sell it, it's critical. More now than ever because there's so yeah. much competition. So. And that's something that really helped uh, Horizon as well uh, yeah. by you know releasing in, in February. Uh, so you know that's uh, something that they really need to take account. 
Uh, same with you know, Nintendo. They released uh, Nintendo Switch on March, and everybody was like, "Oh, uh, why are they releasing it on March? They need the holiday push to you know to push consoles. Without the holiday push, they're not going to be able to sell much." Uh, blah blah blah. But I mean, p- gamers they they want to play games year round. It's not uh, just for one season. Uh, you're forgetting that March is what tax season. That's when a lot of people here in the U.S. they're getting their taxes. They they're looking to spend money, and most of the money that they spend on is going to be either for you know on vacations. Or entertainment and you know video games are of course entertainment so they're looking to buy buy those uh, for their house then you have the summer summertime a lot of kids are gonna be at home parents they don't want to be bothered unless they're gonna be traveling but yeah they want to buy the games for the kids because they don't they're not gonna have anything else aside from you know playing uh, sports or whatever uh, they want to be at home and they want to be entertained so they're gonna be getting games then of course you have the holiday season and the holiday season traditionally of course you're gonna be getting all those gifts so uh, games they sell year round and they shouldn't be afraid you know, to releasing games out of season because they need to find the best place that they can sell that game and it's not going to be overshadowed with a million others uh, same thing that happened to you know Titanfall last year uh, Titanfall 2 um, from all the reviews excellent game one of the best uh, single player campaigns ever when it comes to those type of games but it was overshadowed because it was sandwiched in between Battlefield, in between Call of Duty, and and all the big ones. So if they would have released it out of out of uh, at a different season, it would have sold out a lot more, not be overshadowed. Word of mouth would have made a lot more people get it, but I, it suffered because of it. And that's why, well, with you know, like you say, with you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, hopefully it's not going to be out there and. and and it's going to suffer. Hellblade did enjoy it because there were no other games coming out during that time. And well, and that's another reason why, even though Uncharted is a big series and the Uncharted name carries a lot of fans and, and in it sells, but still they went ahead and released this one before the holiday season because they wanted, they understood yeah. that it still needs to be yeah. seen by the people and and know and know that they that, that it's out there and more and more with the confusion if this a dlc or or its own game right yes. and a lot of people were confused it is its own game i'm telling you guys this game it's 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 a game it's a full game it's not a dlc trust me that's why they sold it and sony was smart even though the game is as big as the first uncharted they said no we're gonna we're not gonna sell it full full price we're gonna sell it all sony's been killing it with the 40 dollar price point like ratchet and clank and now this game uncharted uh, because they know they're they're like you know pe- gamers expect more this day and age, and you're still getting a quality Naughty Dog game for forty dollars, a full game. I'm saying it right now. I'm telling you, I'm, yeah. I'm on chapter five and I already spent close to four hours on the game. But but I'm but I'm I'm slow. I'm looking for everything. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to do all the trophies right and stuff like that. So so the, the, it's a full game, guys. So if if you if you do everything, it's a full game. Trust me. Yeah, it's like uh, the other uh, yesterday. Um... I went ahead. I was driving like 100 miles per hour just to get to the GameStop, so I would be able to grab the last uh, Nintendo <laughs> the Switch. Switch that they had. Second so Switch. yes, I, I was able to grab it. Uh, got in, uh, happy. But yeah, one of the things that I noticed when I walked inside the GameStop store was a big poster, and you had the Uncharted Lost Legacy, you had the Everybody's Golf, and you had the Crash Bandicoot uh, pictures from their covers on the poster. And you know what the the poster showed? New, like new games, forty dollars. So that's an important part of Sony, and I'm and I'm, I'll give props uh, to Sony for that because they have their what you would call like their triple A big titles that they sell for sixty bucks. Then they have the not so big smaller ones like Crash Bandicoot. Then this one, even though this one probably does deserve the sixty dollar price, but because of the the People thinking that it, it's just a DLC, they they went ahead and put it as forty dollars. So I'm glad that they had the two different tiers when it comes to pricing. And hopefully this is something that I mean, even though some companies have been doing it, but it's hopefully something that becomes bigger. And yeah, and you're gonna see it happening more and more often. Well, it, it, but, and not to take a dig on Nintendo, right? Mm-hmm. One to Switch, how much did it cost? Uh, fifty on that one. Yeah. Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, how much it cost? Forty. It, 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 and that's not comparison, my friend. I'm sorry. So even I ask him from Nintendo, like Nintendo, learn the price point. One to switch shouldn't be fifty dollars. Sorry. Uh, if you get a game like this at forty dollars, you know, it's, there's no comparison. But anyway, I guess we can segue, Kalionis, with that. You know, I'm happy for Sony. You know, I'm a Sony fanboy. 
even though I also beat a lot of Nintendo games, but I'm a Sony fanboy. And no, no, you, you are, you are a Sony fanboy. Yes. Sure, sure. But I beat a lot of Nintendo games, right, Caliones? Yes. That yes. It makes me a Nintendo fan, a, Sony, a Nintendo fanboy also. Uh, no, it just makes you a smart gamer. Ah, oh, now is that okay? Okay, I see what you did there. Moving the goalposts. Anyway, it's all good. Uh no, uh, joking aside, me and Carlos, we like to have fun like that. Don't worry about it. We make it. We make our persona. It's like wrestling, right? I'm the under station, and, and Caliones is the Stone Cold Switch Austin. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I don't know why I say that. Uh, well, I, I never liked Stone Cold. That was your character, your guy. No, Mine's no, no, the no, rock. no, no. It was not. So. It was The Rock. It was The Rock. Remember okay. that. It was Andres was the Stone Cold. Remember? Okay, and and 30 years ago, mine was the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Anyway, anyway, switching <laughs> gears, switching gears quickly. I want to give a quick impression of, of Uncharted because I've been playing it. I'm on, like I said, I'm on chapter five. Um, <laughs> and you know what? This is a great game. It's a great game. I'm not denying it. Is it my favorite Uncharted game? No. So let me clarify. Chapter four is huge. Chapter four is kind of like an open world, right? It's not open world, open area, right? It's a big area. <laughs> and, and, and... I'm used to Uncharted being all about the action set pieces, right? So I do miss a little bit the linearity of Uncharted in this game. I miss it because it kind of pats on having those big open areas or that big open area. And I know Naughty Dog was just testing the waters and see how they're... I'm betting you that this was testing ground for them to see how they're going to do The Last of Us. I expect The Last of Us to, to be open areas like this, right? And I know that... They're saying that God of War is going to have open, big open areas like this. Again, they're not open world, but they're just going to have open areas, big open areas. Kind of like, like uh, you know, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider has big open areas, right? Um, so so they testing the grounds. But at the same time, for this game, just to clarify, I want to get the bad out of the way. It hurt the pacing a little bit, right? It did hurt it because I'm used to Uncharted. It's all about pacing, right? And why I love Uncharted 2 so much is the pacing. The pacing on that game was just perfect, right? How how that game went from start to finish just it's just it's an awesome game. That's why I feel that Uncharted 2 is still the best Uncharted to this day. Because Uncharted 4 got also hurt a little bit by the pacing. So anyway, that I believe that did not work that well for Naughty Dog, the open area. It's still fun. It's still a fun game. I know that I I heard that the chapter seven, eight, and nine things pick up like old school Uncharted. I haven't got to that point, so that's why I'm feeling this way. So hopefully I'll beat it and I'll give a, a quick full review in this show. Uh, but Still, great game. Same gameplay as Uncharted 4. You cover base shooter. You was, you know, it's great story. Uh, story still interesting. Chloe, good character. Uh, I, I mean, she is doing a good job in in replacing Nathan Drake. I still miss Nathan Drake. I still miss him. It's not the same without him. It's weird playing as Chloe, but Chloe's still a cool character. So I, I'm not minding her at all. Uh, and and at the same time. Uh, I do do not like some of the gameplay elements from Uncharted 4, like the rope swing that is there. It's back in this game. It, it, it feels really uh, fake when you rope swing from tree to tree, like fucking Spider-Man uh, in some areas. So, that, again, that also hurt Uncharted 4 for me, too, to clarify. So I'm not taking out on this game. I'm just saying that the same gameplay elements on Uncharted 4 is in this game. But that makes sense because they turned this game really quick. Now the good stuff is... I don't know how Naughty Dog does it. I mean, Naughty Dog turned over this game in two years or less than two years. I don't know how the fuck they do it. Those fuckers are awesome. That game is no, still... No, Naughty Dog is Nintendo-esque. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, and then the other good part about this is that even though it's it's probably the worst rated Naughty Dog game in, in years, it's still an 85 in Metacritic. And everybody's like, they're giving props to Sonic Media and Mario and Rabbids. And they got 85s. I think Sonic Media went lower than that. But uh, they're giving props to those games. And everybody, oh my god, Naughty Dog is losing quality. And still that game is 85 on a game that was made in less than two years. And it's a full game. Trust me, guys. It's a full, full game. So this game is pretty good. Uh, I guess to close my impressions of it, it's the... I think Chloe does a good job in replacing Nathan Drake. I think the story is interesting. Uh, I, I, Nadine, I don't like her that much, but I, I like, again, Chloe carries her. I, mean, I have to see more of the story. Uh, there's still times in the game that makes you feel uncharted, but the open area in Chapter 4 does hurt the pacing a little bit because I'm not, I like, linear games are not bad, people. Everybody's like, open world, open world. No, linear games, when done right, are fine. So 
I kind of miss that part from from Uncharted. And again, the gameplay is Uncharted. It's pure Uncharted. Uh, so again, for me, I, I I I fall in between where the Metacritic is. But we'll see where 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 it heads after I play those chapters that everybody say they're it's fucking awesome. So anyway, just quick quick impressions. Unless Caliones, you have any questions for Uncharted: The Lost Legacy? Uh, well, uh, not really. Um, it's uh, it's one of those where in Naughty Dog I trust. Uh, if it's a game that's coming out you know, from them, uh, I'm just gonna. Uh, I mean, nobody needs co to convince me that I need to play the game. I I need to play the game. So. Uh, it's, it's the game I will get around to play it. I currently do not have a PS4, so that's something that I need to, um, yeah, I, I need to fix that. But if I get it has one, an it's Xbox, but also have a PlayStation, but that's fine. Okay. But I have an Xbox One X S. That's my daughter's because she is a Roblox nerd, right. and yeah, and she needs to, yeah, she needed to have it. But, right. Go ahead, Caliona. <laughs> but yes, but um. I mean, I played the other Uncharted games, um, except four. Uh, actually, I haven't played four yet. So I beat the first one, the second one, third one. I got the platinum trophy on the first two. Uh, third one, I needed to do the second playthrough to you know get the trophy, but I haven't done that on there. But it's uh, it's one of those games where it's it's for me. Um, yeah, like like uh, this is something that we were talking about uh, the other day. Is that um, you know what companies are like at the uh, at the very best when it comes to um, video game design and, and all of those things and and Naughty Dog it's uh, for me is like the closest that there is to like a Nintendo um, because of the uh, the quality of their games and and they put their hearts uh, on every single game and it shows because every game that they have released is pretty much amazing and that goes all the way back to you know the PlayStation era games um, so it's uh, something that I will be playing um, mainly because one is an uncharted games two is a naughty dog game so yeah same same reason why i played the last of us Did you play on last of us uh no that's that's the only one i haven't played uh i got a platinum trophy on the first one second one i needed to do the second playthrough on the third one i don't have the playstation but i have the save uh i have it saved so uh so i'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and make sure to to fix that pretty soon well i'm mean, I just saying i just wanted to see if you uh, play on Charter 4 and then the Lost Legacy, we can do a, uh, um, you know, put in order the games. Uh, don't don't get scared. My phone ran out of battery, just in case. Uh, I can't hear you. Can't hear you, Caliones. No, you're saying that you disappeared for a second. I, I, no, I, I no, couldn't I, see you on yeah, there, my so. my phone died, so I apologize for that. But uh, I was saying is we can do a, uh, you know, rank all the Uncharted games once you do that. So uh, we can work on that. Make a video for that. Anyway, that was my impressions. Uh, hello, Sammy Bills. How you doing? Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Sammy. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. We're just talking about a little bit Uncharted. I guess now we're, we're going to head into our Force in Unison Live topic of the show, baby. And what is the topic? It's an interesting topic. I think this is this one Caliones is going to like because it's, it's me going to criticize Sony. So why why I, I am making this topic? So I was playing Hellblade two weeks ago, just in case I have the plat for Hellblade. <laughs> Cheap plug. Uh, plat 127. Uh, so, uh, so I was playing the game. There's one part in the game where uh, you go into the darkness, right? And you try to find your way without seeing. It's like a challenge that you have to beat to get this special sword in the game. And it's all dark. And then you're trying to find the win the, the character touches and then you how you find that win is basically by the vibration of the controller right so i was playing i was like and i feeling the vibration in the controller goes up and down and moves and whatever I, I beat it i go to the next stage i feel that vibration i keep going and playing the game and then i start thinking about it i even i even uh, texted Kaliona. i start thinking about it one of the topics i wanted to touch was is sony behind in the uh vibration technology or how you, we could call it the feedback controller feedback you know whichever it, it, it's it, oh, yeah, feedback. Yeah. it's 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 it, they're way behind and the reason i say that is because i have played xbox one s and i feel the vibration uh for forza horizon i have played uh, the nintendo switch with one to switch even though i gave shit to that game it's a perfect tech demo uh for the different hd feedback rumble feedback that the controller has 
and then I, I was playing this this part in Hellblade, and the vibration was the same. It, it didn't have like how put it like the, with the switch. If you're playing rabbits, and I think you you notice this, Kalionis. Depending on what your attacks you've done, the vibration changes and it goes super soft to hard, and then gives you a lot of like you know good feedback when you do yeah. special. I don't know if you noticed that, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you can even argue that the, the Rumble Pack from the Nintendo 64 is better than the PS4 controllers. Well, I don't know. I, I don't remember, honestly, because I never bought the Rumble Pack. I thought at that time Rumble Pack was stupid. And then uh, then it came into uh, the next gen, and yeah, yeah, then I noticed, okay, Rumble is cool, but it's not like a huge deal. I think Rumble was cool to me when Metal Gear Solid 1, when you were fighting Psycho Mantis, and he made that in the controller. That made Rumble cool at that point, right? That's the technology that, that, that they've been using. It. And, and that wasn't bad technology, uh, Kali Honest. But my point that I was trying to make was is that Sony's compared to Microsoft and Nintendo is really way behind in the in the rumble technology. Like I think I I know Sony spent a lot of money in redesigning the controller this gen. They did a good job. I think the the new controller is way better than the PS3, PS2 controller. So that was Yeah, that but that's uh, but I mean, I would say like there's uh, two things that they're behind when it comes to the controller. Yes, uh, the you know the feedback, the vibration, that's one of them. And the other one is the battery because uh, the controller battery is it doesn't really last as long as you know the other batteries. And especially when you compare it to the Pro controller on the Nintendo uh, Switch, which is like 40 hours. Uh, the Pro on the Wii U was well, like 80 hours. Remember that, um, that battery is bad because of the. We mm. didn't know at that time, but they had that light in the middle that they designed for the BR, right? Basically, that's uh, yeah. if if they would eliminate that light on the controller, you, the controller would last way longer. And people have been asking them to just yeah, that's something that they, it's, it's just um, switch it off. Uh, yeah, just uh, just an update, just update you know the uh, the software on the on the PlayStation, and just let you go to the options yeah. and turn it off. I don't know why that I mean, they, it, it's yeah. it's kind of like uh, letting you change your name. It's stuff. There's something simple stuff that Sony just can't figure out. That's why I said software Microsoft is better, and then hardware I think Sony is better than Microsoft, right? Because that's the reason. I mean, Microsoft uh, OS, you can change your name, you can all this sh all this shit easily, right? And Sony's do not. Anyway, but going back to my point, I guess playing Hellblade it made me realize how behind Sony is with the Rumble feature, uh, and I wish. You know, I I know Sony did a lot of good work in improving the controller for this gen. They way better controller than the last two gens. Uh, I just think now the next step for Sony is again they're behind on the rumble. I think they need to catch up with the times. I don't know, Kalionis, if you have anything to add to that. Oh no, no boys, no boys. <laughs> Come on, no technical well, difficulties from my part, no, Kalionis. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. No, uh, <laughs> no, I was gonna say like. Um, I, I've, I've said it before, and you know how I've been critical of Sony when it comes to uh, like kind of like copying certain things from other companies. Uh, but I, I'll say this: uh, if you look at the Pro controller uh, for the Nintendo Switch, it's really similar to the controller from the Xbox. So uh, they said, you know what? We actually that like that design. We're just gonna go with something that's you know similar. Um, and I kind of wish you know the uh, PlayStation did the same thing, not not copy the the format because I I do like. Uh, the PlayStation controller, and it's actually, I mean, it's very different from the Xbox One controller and the Nintendo Switch Pro, but I still like the design of it. Uh, but when it comes to those things, just even if you're blatant, uh, at the end of the day, you're just giving the best thing for your uh, consumers and, and your players, and, and you have an install base, which is uh, over 60 million you know, PS4 owners, um, allegedly. Uh, but uh, but yes, uh, if you improve on those things, uh, you already given the the best form factor on this past generation for them. You're also going to give them the best way to uh, to play the games. And um, I mean, just uh, what we call like the the quality of life uh, improvements uh, that they can do, even if it's you know, copying another company, just just do it. I mean, uh, there's you know, com the companies they copy each other all the time. And you know, Nintendo in make something, but at the same time they'll take something from here. Microsoft the same thing, Sony the same thing. And if it's something that it's already been tested on uh, one of the other consoles and proven to work, then you know, just do it. So uh, with the controller, that's the um, the like, like you said, is when it comes to the the Sony PlayStation, the system, the what it has. Um, one of the short comments is the controller. So just just go ahead and improve those things and, and make it better for. Um, you know, for the consumer and for the, the players that 
they are your loyal fans and the ones that you know give you the money and decide to spend on it to to get it so uh that's they, it could be easily improved um it's not something that i don't think is going to cost you know too much money because the other you know microsoft and nintendo they're already using that you know nintendo has the uh the the you know the new uh you know what they call the rumble technology on uh on the joy con so uh, yeah, I mean, Sony could very well do it, uh, adopt another controllers, and I mean, everybody wins uh, because they'll be able to a- enjoy and have something that's better than they currently have. Okay, I agree, Caliones. Hopefully, well, Sony's not going anywhere, so we'll see PlayStation 5. They may improve the rumble feature because they're really behind. I do like the HD rumble on the Switch, and I look the ha- the, like the haptic feedback from the rumble for the Xbox One S. Uh, I still, in my for my taste, I prefer the PlayStation controller over the Xbox controller. Uh, so I don't think they're that bad. I think the the Nintendo Switch Pro controller and the and the PlayStation controller, I like them both. Uh, but I kind of still like the PlayStation controller. But that's because I'm used to the the analog sticks being, you know, where they are. But uh, it doesn't mean that I understand when people say that they prefer the Xbox controller, and that's fine. Uh, and I to clarify, I played all of the controllers because for PC gaming, I use an Xbox 360 controller. So, you know, I play a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles with an Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess, Caliones, I think that's the last segment. Uh, typically, we end this show with questions from the audience. I don't know if there's any questions that you guys want to ask on the chat. I haven't seen uh, questions like we saw on the last episode coming up. But uh, I don't know, guys. If you want to ask any questions right now, now is the time. Uh, we should put the the uh, the Jeopardy music right now while we wait. Or something. Yeah, yeah, like speak now or forever hold your tune. So, <laughs> come <laughs> so, on, okay, guys, so... please. Any questions? We're here to answer. You can ask anything, anything. It can be even personal. Does Cal- Caliones has three nipples? I can say yes. He has three nipples. Uh, you, if you want to ask those questions, go ahead and ask those questions. It's... Is Dante married? Yeah, uh, he is, and I can't believe it because he's a sad POS. <laughs> what is POS? Uh, I mean, it's I don't know who's listening to it. Uh, might be kids, so I can't really say it. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. But yes, it seems like Sammy is thinking. Uh, so, uh, are you, is he gonna try to hit us with a really hard one, uh, just you know, to make it look uh, look bad on the stream? Uh, come on, Sammy, come come at us. <laughs> I should put the next one. Here we go. What is your favorite first-person game? Go ahead, Kalionis. You answer that one first, and I have one, so I can I can answer. But you go first. Uh your favorite first-person game. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to like say, Dantes. You go first. <laughs> that bad, Kalionis. Uh, I would say Mirror Edge on the PlayStation Three because it was unique. Uh, I don't I don't like first-person games at all. Uh, if I play like something like Skyrim or The Witcher, I would use the third person perspective. I always like third person perspective better. I like to see the character. I like to see the movements. I like to see where, where I go. But Mirror Edge on the PlayStation 3 was really unique in the way how you did the parkour as you jumped through the buildings. And, and to get the plot on that game, that was a tough plot, let me tell you. And it was because of the challenges. But I still enjoyed it. I still enjoy the challenge. I still enjoy trying to get one of those plats that not a lot of people have out there because it shows your, you know, again, it shows your, your gaming cred, I guess you can call it that way. Uh, so I would say, Sammy, Mirror Edge for me is one of my favorite first-person games. I don't know if that triggers something in your brain, Kalyan. You have to have a first-person game somewhere. Well, I mean, but it's, it's the, the thing is that when it comes to first-person games, um, I mean, I'm probably going to have to go all the way back to the Nintendo 64 and GoldenEye. Uh, because, That's you know, fine. GoldenEye, you yeah, it was uh, it was one of the first, you know, first-person games that, that I played. I had played, um, like, Doom and Wolfstein and, and those. Um, uh, but something about, you know, GoldenEye that it was the very first time that I played, like, those, you know, that type of shooter. And I played it with you know, the two Nintendo 64 controllers. So I had the two, you know, you know uh, sticks on any side and... It, it was it was gaming heaven. So I, I really love that game, and I really haven't had uh, the same feeling um, after you know afterwards. So uh, kind of like like you were saying about you know Psycho Mantis and the Rumble and all that. That those are you know like the you know few uh, games that you have experienced something that you may never experience again, and you're kind of afraid as a gamer that uh, I mean we may, may may never see it again. So 
but yeah, uh, GoldenEye, I think I will say that it's my best, uh, you know, my favorite first person game. That's right. There you go. There you go, Sammy. See, we could answer your question. Don't be scared, my friend. Let me know if you have any other questions. Let us know. I guess with that, well, well, while someone puts a question, I'm going to drop a, a quick topic. So what is the most, we talk about Psycho Mantis, right? And how, how that was impressive. I guess, what any other gaming moments that you felt was so impressive to you that the first time it happened, you were like, oh my God, this is so awesome? Well, uh, I'm actually going to steal this one from you because um, I think you're going to say it first, but uh, Final Fantasy VII. And you know what exactly what scene I'm talking about. It yep. was the uh, one of the, the biggest yep. gaming Spoiler. moments. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you haven't played it by now, uh, I mean, I'm sorry about you, but whenever, you know, Sephiroth came down on Iris and <sighs> I'll say that I was just left with my mouth open and I didn't really, really believe it because for me, that was the first time that I had one of my major characters die and not really uh, midway through the game. It was uh, a little bit earlier than that. So you would expect whoa, whoa, that you were going to have... Too much spoilers. But... Too much spoilers. Come on, man. I okay, okay, the okay. game is like 30 years old, but you know, no. okay. <laughs> too much spoilers. <laughs> but yeah, but but yes, uh, that was one of the uh, the biggest gaming moments for me. Uh, so, you know, kind of like the same thing as my the first day I walked over to Toys R Us and they had the Nintendo 64 and they had Mario uh, 64 on there and just seeing the, a 3D game uh, that I, you know, like that that you could... I see the entire camera movement and, and all of that. So it's it's one of those things that you can't really, it's hard to experience nowadays because we've already played games for so many years that it, it's just hard. But but for me, the, the most recent one, and it wasn't really a game, it was just being able to sit down in the living room, dock the Nintendo Switch, and undock it and take it with me and play uh, at my you know, job and and, and so that's that's uh, another feeling. Of course, yeah, it's been it's already faded away because I already I take it for granted. But it's it's um those gaming moments they're far in between hey, hey, nowadays. Don't, don't keep saying uh, that because my friend Dynasty, Randall. Hopefully, I know you typically don't don't join, but you watch the videos later on, Randall. I know you gave some good points about how other systems have done what the Switch has done. Dude, I agree a hundred percent with you on your comment section. I know that other system has done it. I think where Calionis and I are is that the Switch just, just, just do it so seamlessly between switching between dock and, and you know, and, and portable and, and dock. So that's the point. But you're, you, you bring good points. And Randall, if you ever want to join us live, we can have that topic. We can we can bring you on a board and we can have that, you know, that discussion. You and Calionis debating here at the show. My friend, I'm inviting you just in case. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, but, uh, but Dante's uh, asked a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, uh, go ahead and, and tell us about your gaming moment, and then we'll go ahead and continue with Sam because he does have another question. Okay, yeah, not a problem. So uh, my gaming moment, there's plenty, but Mario 64 is one. Why? The first time you saw Mario in 3D, I think that that that, that feeling the first time, no no, no game is going to go even close, right? Yeah. Uh, a, a big moment, Final Fantasy VII, you said it. We talked about the Metal Gear, Psycho Mantis point. The first time I played Metal Gear, that was like – the. That was so huge for me because it's the first time I felt games were becoming like movies, right? So Metal Gear Solid, the first one, it's just freaking awesome game. Uh, the other moment is late, the Xenoblade Chronicles. The reason I became in love with that game was out of the bat, right? The first seeing, you know, battle between the Mechon and the Holmes and Dumban fighting to save them. That was, that was a great scene. And then they crushed, got back to Colony. Nine and what happens there? I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to go into spoilers, but a character something happens to a character. The, this first time I felt that my hair just lifted up from my arms, and then another thing where Dumban just comes showing down, saving Chulk and Ryan uh, against the Mechas. That was another great thing, and the dialogue in that game just again just pumps me. The music just pumps me too. So again, that RPG was really uh, uh, impression to me, and and also I have to give props to the PlayStation VR. PlayStation VR, even though that I don't think the tech is there, it is really impressive. When you put it in your head, and that's where I'm going to answer Sammy's uh, question too. Uh, you know, PlayStation VR is impressive. It is impressive. Trust me. Uh, I think that it just needs a couple more years or more tech time to develop to be what you want it to be because there's still not fully freedom, right? Uh, no, or it needs it needs a, a Naughty Dog game. That's what it needs. <laughs> well, you're not going to get that, but but there's still some impressive games in there. Uh, I played uh, uh, the Batman game on there. That was pretty cool. Again, it was kind of like a tech demo. I played that. I played Job Simulator there. Hey, another fun game to play on VR. 
I I played uh, 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 the game that comes with a lot of mini games. Uh, I forgot the name of VR World. Sorry, VR World and the different games in there. That was really impressive. Uh, so you know, it, it's it's a fun, fun, fun headset. It just sucks that it, that I wish there was more to it, right? Uh, but it's still impressive. I mean, you could see if they really take their time to develop this tech, <laughs> it could be it could be wild. Let me put it that way. Okay, let's go answer. I'm gonna read Sammy's question. What do you guys think of Resident Evil going into first person with Resident Evil 7? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, like, I haven't played Resident Evil 7 because of that, right? Because I like my third person games more than first person view. And and, and, and I, I played Resident Evil 4. I played Resident Evil 5. I did not play Resident Evil. Well, I play, let me clarify. I played Resident Evil 2. Uh, I played uh, Coberonica. I played all those games. Uh, so I'm a huge old school Resident Evil fan, but I also, for the newer versions, I played Resident Evil 4, and you know what's funny? I like Resident Evil more with the uh, uh, motion controls. I love Resident Evil 4 in the Wii. To me, that is the ultimate version of that game. A lot of people say, oh, motion controls suck. Once you play Resident Evil 4 with that that way, I did not play Resident Evil 5 until it, it came compatible with the move controller, because I just loved playing Resident Evil or that type of game with the motion controls. Hey, the first time you play Metroid Prime with the motion control, I know people give a lot of shit to to, to motion controls, but there's some games that, that really take advantage. I know Kaliones did not like Skyward Sword. I like Skyward Sword with motion controls. Anyway, that was another question. I'm sorry I went and rambled on sideways, but uh, that's the reason I haven't played it, because it's in first-person view. I want to play it. Uh, I'm just waiting. Uh, I thought there was some DLC coming. I want Again, I'm one of those guys that wait for everything to come. Uh, first, before I play it, I don't want to replay a game after again. I want to have everything in there. So once all the DLC comes out, I'm probably going to take a try. I may do it in VR so I can shed my pants for sure. But anyway, Galeones, go ahead. What do you think about uh, about Resident Evil in first person? Okay, well, um, I mean, when it comes to Resident Evil 7, I do have uh, like kind of like mixed feelings on the game. Um, it's it's one of those where the game, it's it was... Um, uh, critically acclaimed. So when it comes to the reviews and all of that, uh, the game did great. But uh, when it comes to the sales, uh, the game suffered because it went away from what uh, basically was already established as Resident Evil games, which was you know, more like the action pack, uh, over the shoulder, uh, you know, camera view, and and you go and change it over to the first person. Yes, uh, they went back to the horror uh, elements from the first uh, you know, first you know, three games you can say. Uh, before you know, Resident Evil 4 changed their formula, but even though they went back to the horror uh, by adopting it into a first-person view, uh, it kind of like alienated a, a lot of the fans. Um, as far as the other Resident Evil games, I played uh, Resident Evil Zero. I played them one, two, three, four, five, um, and five was the last one. Even though I did enjoy five, and I enjoyed a lot more the uh, the online portion, the uh, the mercenaries. Um, on five and but it by that point it was becoming more I'll say like closer to the movies mm -hmm. and I really don't like the the Resident Agreed. Evil movies. Agreed. Yeah. Um, That's why I did not play Resident yeah. Evil Six is because mm -hmm. it was it was an action game basically. I yeah. do have it in Steam, so I may give it another go. We'll see. I don't know. I'm I'm not into it in reality. But, but I, yeah, so I'll say I I commend uh, Capcom for going the extra mile and, and trying to change the formula. And, and trying to make sure that they went back to their, their horror uh, roots. But uh, by now, I would say that for people, uh, you know, perhaps uh, the evil within is more so of a Resident Evil than Resident Evil, you know, uh, is right now. Uh, but I'm okay with it. They probably should have just called it something different instead of Resident Evil, uh, even though, I mean, without spoiling anything, the main character that you're playing with does have to do with the original Resident Evil games. So if you play, you'll find out. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those where um, it, it it probably should not have been a Resident Evil game. It was it went too far away from what people were already used to, and it really showed in the in the sales because um, not that many people bought the game. So, well, probably it's um I guess um that that pretty much yeah covers it. I I appreciate the effort, but uh, if Resident Evil should probably just go back because that's what what people expect from it. So. Well, um, aside me you know, like, uh, does that answer your question, Sammy, or uh, do you have any other questions, or anybody else out there, uh, if you want to ask, or you know, like, 
um, like comment or anything, uh, let us know. I guess with that, I don't see anything else, Caliones. I think let's close the shows. We've been uh, an hour and a half streaming, so I think that was a, a pretty uh, full-on show. Right yeah, here. We, we were tuning for one hour, so... Yeah, been, exactly. You know, we went fun. an hour and a half. So, again, we like to do live because we interact with you guys. We also talk about other things than Nintendo. <laughs> but we also love doing the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast. It's a fun show. Uh, you know, uh, me and Caliones are big Nintendo fans. We're not going to deny that. And I think we like talking about Nintendo. And we're so happy how Nintendo is doing so well uh, this gen for sure. Uh, look at that. I'm running out of charge for sure. That's one of the phones just telling me. Uh, anyway, with my phone dying, I think it's time to end this show. Let's put a little bit of music here to end that, baby. Let me go here. This is the fun part about me having now two monitors. Here we go. Yeah! Thank you, everybody, for joining us at Forcing Unison Live right here at the Forcing Unison Gaming Channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. So you can make these two crazy motherfuckers happy. Also, please remember that we have a small Nintendo podcast call to get in and get out Nintendo podcast every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Also, we have other shows like Streaming Wednesdays and Gameplay Thursdays, where every Wednesday and every Thursday we'll be uploading gameplay videos. And every Wednesday, of course, Caliones or myself will be streaming again. Caliones, the streaming master, baby. <laughs> Also, remember, if you want to get our podcast, you can go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download that podcast for free. Also, please remember, we have a small Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Dante says finally, go to ChigueroSNews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you for joining us. Long live gaming, baby. See you guys. Thank you. Have a great one, everyone.